Welcome back to Cedarbrook Park Zoo. My realistic zoo, really with a focus on just having fun and creating something as true to life as possible when it comes to a zoo. Now, in our first episode, we really focus on getting that entrance set up and really just focusing on creating that welcoming atmosphere with a mixture of uh, city vibes. And, you know, we saw that with the addition of things like our bus stop and our gift store and our subway entrance, which honestly, I'm really happy with the subway entrance, which is something that's so small. You wouldn't really think that it would be what uh, I was super proud of, but that's what I am proud of. I've never really done something like that. So I thought it was really cool. In today's episode, we're really focusing on getting our first animal added to Cedarbrook Park. And I figured what better than maybe the meerkat. It's an animal that doesn't require a whole lot of space. And that's really key to our entire theme of city zoo. And while I call it a city zoo, the reality is it's, you know, built on a park. So there's lots of land for us to work with. Uh, and we're going to see that in the coming episodes as we start really expanding outwards and focusing on the realism that comes with running a zoo uh, in Europe. And I'm going to be honest, I don't really know a whole lot about running a zoo in Europe, but I'm hoping that you guys will be there to help uh, provide some feedback and see the channel grow and see Cedarbrook Park Zoo grow as well. So as with everything, you know, in a normal zoo, we want to start off with like a barrier. And the barrier that you're seeing being built right now is really my first attempt at building something that's super unique and super fun. Now, I will be honest, as with everything with Planet Zoo, there's so much to dig through and to help build and it can be really overwhelming. And it's no different for me. It was really overwhelming putting these things together. And you saw me flip through uh, the board quite a bit looking for particular parts. You know, honestly, there's so much out there. I'm just not too familiar uh, with all the parts that are available for us to work. With. But last, I am uh, very happy with what we've achieved. And I think it's something that looks really cool. Now, considering that this is supposed to be a modern style zoo, I figured our first exhibit needs to have an indoor and outdoor portion. To it. And that's what I really wanted to focus on, creating this uh, really inviting habitat it's going to be really focused on education because really that's what we want to focus on is education and getting our guests all happy and, you know, spending more money because admittedly we need to fund this and our other parks can't continue to fund our zoo as much as they are right now. And uh, we need to get out of that habit because we've borrowed a lot of money uh, from our other zoos to fund this new venture. Now, I think you've heard me say this in another video a while ago, which is planning is key. And I will be the first person to learn uh, and listen to my own advice and say, maybe I didn't do that. Maybe I didn't really plan out very clearly. Uh, and I've learned from my lesson. And what I mean by that is I've started graphing out all of our builds. In fact, I already have our next build uh, planned out and I've already started building it because I really want to focus on giving more realism to Cedarbrook Park Zoo. You know, it's not enough just to tack something on and find a home for it. I really want to create some semblance of planning associated with that, almost like a city planner building something. So I've uh, started graphing everything out and I actually picked this tip up from uh, Sparrow. You've heard me talk about her a few times on the channel because uh, we learn, I want to say we learn so much from each other. Uh, I don't know if she learns from me, but hey, I think, uh, it, you know, maybe it goes two ways. But as I was saying, um, she was showing us a future build and she actually used graph paper. And I think that's an amazing idea, utilizing graph paper to uh, really graph out what you want to build. And the benefit with graph paper is you can actually build it to scale because everything works on these four meter blocks, which I got to say, four meter blocks are the worst to work with. I really wish we would have like a two meter path, uh, path for uh our workers, I, you know, the fact that they have to have a four meter path blows my mind, but I get it, you know, constraints of the game. It is what it is. Uh, but, uh, you know, if I had uh, my uh, feedback for a future version of this game, I would love some smaller paths. But going back to the entire idea, it's all about planning it out. And you saw these walls up here and uh, they're pretty bare. They're pretty generic looking and they're going to change, I promise you. Uh, but we really planned out the entire build. I really wanted to make sure that we had something that was going to work out. And part of that path planning was, you know, putting everything on paper and then once it's on paper, putting it on the game and, and working within those constraints. Uh, so if there's a tip that you can take away from this video, please let it be that, you know, pick up a graph book and start graphing out your builds. I think it helps out a lot. Uh, and honestly, it's a lot easier to erase in that game, like on paper, than it is in the game because you spend so much time making things look perfect and it just doesn't work. And case in point by the walls, uh, they change from wood uh, to green plaster. So the reason for that is I had found this uh, concept 
drawing of some zoo facilities, and I really like the way they look. Now, that being said, the concept art uh, wasn't really what we're seeing here today. It was more focused on bricks and stuff like that. And who knows, maybe a portion of our zoo will have that view because it's going to get really boring seeing the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, but suffice to say, I wanted to have fun with this. And I've never really paired uh, panels on top of existing uh, wall pieces and to get, you know, like this really cool two tone uh, view. And it kind of comes back to my rant about four meter squares. I hate working with four meter blocks. You know, you don't have as lot as much freedom with that. So uh, utilizing these panels to kind of create this, uh, you know, two tone view look really cool. Now, originally in my concept, I really wanted to focus on like a darker interior. Uh, they're mere cats, you know, I would assume that they might want a nice dark place to live in. I don't, I say assume, but you know, you know what they say about that. But uh, I really wanted to focus on creating something uh, more unique. So my initial idea was to go with like this dark interior setting, lots of blacks and purples and stuff like that. But in building it, I realized that's just not who I am. And sometimes that's what's most important is you build based off of who you are from a personality perspective. And I love bright white lights, you know, natural lighting. I'm not a huge fan of yellow lighting. I, I love, you know, big, big old windows and stuff like that. So that meant that I wanted to keep that going. So I built up a bunch of windows and then started uh, working on the rest of the zoo. Now, when I think about going into an exhibit, you want something that's going to direct you to where you need to go. And the best way to have that, and I kind of thought about this with these paw prints, and you would follow these paw prints through the exhibit because we want to have our guests flow through this exhibit. And of course, you can't have an exhibit without some seating areas, so I put some benches down. Although I got to say, the fact that you don't have as much control over where benches go really bothers me, and it's something that I think they need to go back and revisit. Now, when you think of a realistic exhibit, uh, I really hope education comes front of mind. And every time I go to an exhibit, I always know that you're gonna learn something. And I felt that I needed to build something else. So I created The Facts, which is my first education board. Uh, and I actually got the letters from uh, the Steam Workshop, I'm not gonna lie, got over my aversion to using the Steam Workshop items for this particular build, uh, and it worked out really well. Now, while I was here, I also wanted to do some work on this rock terrarium that we built. So I added some really cool foliage, which, uh, you know, less is more in this case. It looks really nice. I thought it uh, turned out really well. And uh, once I kind of got, I was happy with that, I added on our uh, meerkat statues. Now, when you think of a meerkat, uh, and you're gonna see this shortly, you think of their sentries. Every time you talk about a meerkat, you're gonna see sentries. So I put these uh, meerkats and they're facing the two doors, almost as if they're guarding the two ways that you can get into this exhibit and they're prepared for you know whoever comes up. Now, once we were done with the facts, I also wanted to add some more education boards. So I struggled a little bit in turning it into one, one piece to work with. And then I renamed this our life cycle. Now you're gonna see the uh, item I use, which is this really cool board that's uh, really easy to work with. So, you know, I had to do some, uh, some TLC on my end just to make it work out, but I wanted to do something called the life cycle. You can kind of see it's taken shape. We're getting there. So finally got life cycle up there and I added it in. Now, the really cool thing with these uh, these lettering is they're so small that they're easy to work with uh, and they fit on these education boards. They don't look too crazy. Now, when you think of a life cycle as well, not that I could uh, have the skills to get there, uh, but you think of like these clocks and stuff like that. So the idea behind it is you're going to have these like clocks or pie charts that are kind of just detailing uh, all the important elements of the life cycle of the meerkat. Now, once our uh, education elements were pretty much put together, it was really time for us to circle back on the interior of our habitat. And I struggle with making really enticing back walls on the interiors. So I decided to use a really cool trick. And I've shared this with a few people. You've seen me use it a few times, but I truly mastered it this time, I think. And really what it is, you take these screens and then you find a photo. And uh, depending on the type of software you have, you actually mirror the photo back to, uh, back to back. And you can get this one continuous image without any bricks. And I think it actually worked out really well. Although with the clouds, you can kind of see that it's a mirrored image, but small details uh, and it worked out. Now, uh, while we kind of put together all the foliage and the interior aspect, which you've seen a lot of, and I've talked a lot about this already, uh, instead, I actually want to talk to you about the meerkat. Now, part of the reason why is when I, you know, choose to put an animal into an exhibit, I really want to know more about the animal. And part of it is all about education. I love to learn about animals and, you know, how they work. And I love the idea. My favorite fact about meerkats is they actually have groups and they're called mobs or clans, which 
I love the idea of just seeing a mob of meerkats running at you. And they can be up to 30. There's up to 30 individual members in a mob and their uh, matriarchal uh, hierarchy. So it's all about the female in uh, the uh, meerkat mob, which again, really cool that you call it a mob. Now, on top of that, meerkats are really only found uh, natively in southern parts of Africa, including South Africa, Botswana, Namibia and southwestern Angola, which I think is pretty cool. They're they're fairly uh, they're fairly far out there. Now, they are burrowing creatures. We see that with our burrowing uh, habitat that we set up. And on top of that, they uh, they love this lookout duty, which I love the idea of lookout duty. So they actually have these meerkats that are set up as sentinels and they look out for the group and they actually stand on their hind legs, which is really cool. And then they have these really cool distinctive alarm calls to help warn the group of potential threats that are kind of uh, coming up. I think that's a really cool style of, um, you know, organization that you don't normally see in a lot of animals to that extent. Now, with the guest facing uh, indoor habitat kind of set up, it's time for us to work on our backstage area. And I really wanted to focus on some realism. So stretching back to my experiences with all of these really cool back areas with zoos and whatnot, uh, I wanted to build something that was as true to form as possible. And I think a lot of the success from this build, again, is going to come back from the planning because I planned out this backstage area so much. There was a lot that went into it and I had these big plans for it. It didn't work out. Originally, I wanted to have like multiple rooms and stuff like that. Just didn't have enough room. And again, dealing with a four meter uh, block grid is is really tough because you kind of can't really build what you want to build within those uh, those grids. But alas, we've created this two stage or two room uh, kennel. And the reason why it's two rooms, you have to keep in mind that you're not going to go and just walk into a habitat and then you know collect uh, your meerkat and then bring them to quarantine for testing or for health purposes. No, you really, the, the, you need them to come back here to us. So there are a lot of training occurs with that, usually with enrichment items to entice them to come back here, at which point you'll be able to you know close them in so you can kind of keep them contained and then start working on what it is that you need to identify. Maybe you're doing like a pregnancy check or maybe just a regular health check up and uh, ended up coming up with this uh, really cool design where you have like wheels that would you know essentially back everything up and stuff like that so you can kind of partition everything. So I think it turned out really well I'm quite happy with it. Now that being said we also need a ramp to get in there and I kind of stumbled across this really cool trick uh, which is utilizing the uh, cladding pieces as the floor uh, and it, you, you always get that rough look so it looks kind of almost realistic. So I uh, got a little sidetracked there because I was super excited about that tip that I took up. Uh, but our uh, our building is slowly coming to form. Now, you are going to see a quick glimpse of the finished backstage area, but I didn't really want to build that on camera. Part of the reason why is uh, when you build a backstage area, it's a lot of repetitiveness, a lot of just copying. And, and I'll be honest, my skills at building individual unique items like that, just not quite there. So the majority of it actually came from the uh, workshop. So I will admit there's a lot more workshop items here, uh, but that's okay. Again, like I mentioned earlier, you know, I had to get over my version of using workshop items because I wanted to create something that's truly realistic. And I think we're getting there. And you know, who knows, maybe I'll have the skills to build something on my own down the road. And an example of this would be this wood overhang. I wanted to create something that's going to be more unique than just a flat wall. And when we're building with buildings, it just, everything seems flat. I don't like it. You can hide it by putting things on the bottom, like flower boxes and stuff like that, or planter boxes and whatnot. It's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to build something even cooler. Uh, so I went with this wood overhang, and I am so happy with what we've achieved with this. Now, if this is something you want to have, uh, I'm, if you want to build this, if you want this in your, in your zoo, by all means, let me know. I'll add it to the workshop. I've always been really self-conscious about putting things on the workshop because I don't think they're that good. Uh, but people are correcting me. So I uh, put this all the way on the building. It took a lot of work to get there. And uh, now we're kind of uh, finishing and coming in on the, uh, the end goal of this entire zoo. Now, knowing that we're in the end stage of this build, it was really time for us to finish a few minor details. The first one being this really cool sentry tower. Figured, hey, we had meerkats, they were sentries. Why would we not add something like that to our own build? So we ended up going with this uh, dark brown mud tower. I don't know, it looked kind of, it looked okay. And you know, it didn't really plan for this. So it was like going by the seat of my pants on this one, but I ended up going with this two-tone color and it worked out really well. Very happy with how it uh, ended up. And then I 
curved some of these standard uh, New World windows around it, you know, to get that curved feature, but it also adds a bunch of light up here as well, which I think is something that we were missing. We didn't really have a whole lot of light on the top. Now, speaking of light, I uh, we need some natural light to appear in our exhibit. So I went with these really cool custom built or as much as you can build a custom skylight as we can. And uh, I uh, didn't know how it was going to turn out. And I'm pretty surprised uh, with what we've achieved. It is a little large, I will admit it's uh, larger than maybe we would want it. Uh, but it's uh, it's turned out to be a really cool build. So on that note, I am going to leave the commentary here. I think you've heard me talk more than enough, but have no fear uh, because we will have our regular tour of this latest addition to Cedarbrook Park Kazoo. And with the finishing touches on our tower, it is now time for us to take a look at all of the hard work we've accomplished today. And it is quite a bit, uh, but I figured the best place to start off with is Climate and You, which is really just an education board that talks about climate change in two different areas. We have Australia and then the rainforest and how uh, we can affect change uh, within our everyday life to you know help combat climate change. I ended up finding these on a Nexus mod site. It was just a bunch of uh, graphics and I kind of downloaded it looking for some uh, backstage graphics and stumbled across these. And I think they uh, they fit really well. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, kind of had the Jerry rig it a little bit to make it uh, fit and uh, within the section, but I think it uh, it looks really cool. But we didn't come here for the climate and you. We actually came here for our Meerkat exhibit. And I love what we've achieved with our Meerkat exhibit. And speak of the devil, we have some Meerkats coming out to enjoy the sun. Uh, but we have a few things to kind of talk about. Number one, of course, is going to be our, all of our grass that we place down. I did come back and lower it all uh, closer into the ground. It kind of just gives it a little bit more of a, a dispersed look and, and I'm quite happy with how it kind of turned out. When you look over there in the background, you can actually see our uh, little uh, hidden entrance for our meerkats with our little enrichment item. There's actually another enrichment item up there. Not that you can see it, but it, the goal is to kind of get them to uh, to go up and utilize it. It's been used a few times, not often, but it does get used and I'm kind of happy with how it turns out. We do have our custom uh, meerkat education board. So again, this actually came from the same pack as the conservation pack that I uh, downloaded. Uh, so I'm really happy with how this kind of uh, turned out. Uh, it's a really cool um, infographic. And the fact that there's so much information on here is phenomenal. Of course, a uh, really cool feed fact is uh, the meerkat females are actually uh, the alpha. The largest female usually assumes the role of the alpha, which is a really cool fact when it comes to the uh, animal kingdom. And then uh, we have them. It kind of looks like they're on Sentry. Oh, I love the fact that he's just kind of like hanging out on top of each other. Oh, that was so adorable. <laughs> we do have a few other enrichment items out here, really just in an effort to draw them out into the uh, the open because we want to have, of course, the majority of our uh, guests kind of view them from out here. But as you want to go inside, so of course, as we head around the corner, we can see some uh, paw prints on the ground. And the idea behind this is that the paw prints would kind of guide you uh, into the exhibit proper. Uh, so as a kid, I could envision myself kind of like hopping from one to the other and trying to like step in the paw prints. I think that would be a really cool uh, small little detail. And I love the way it worked out. 
Of course, our first thing on the inside is our Meerkat education board. So I love the lettering and I found this. This is actually a uh, uh, Steam Workshop item and uh, the lettering, I've always st struggled with smaller lettering. Uh, usually like they, they're too large or something like that, like all the pieces they use go back too far. But these pieces are uh, quite small and I love the like how much you can use it. It's quickly becoming my favorite item to utilize. I've actually used it in quite a few uh, future builds for our zoo as well. Uh, but when you come in, we have, of course, the facts, which we touched on. We have the life cycle and then we have this. So I did uh, show a little bit of this in the build, uh, but I'm really happy with how we got the glass to work and took quite a bit to get there. Uh, you can actually see that the glass doesn't uh, necessarily uh, work all the way around correctly. So we had to kind of uh, make do with a smaller piece, but I'm really happy with how that looked. Uh, I didn't put it in the build site because it actually uh, took a really long time to decide on this. Uh, it's one of the one of the things that I think I struggled with the most, especially kind of going around the curve and getting everything to match really uh, smoothly uh, or as smoothly as you can with uh, square pieces. Uh, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Originally, I actually wanted to have a window here kind of looking out into the rest of the zoo. Uh, and I just couldn't get the window to sit correctly. It was too large. Uh, and then I ended up going on this like little rock. Uh, and then, you know, with our meerkats on sentry duty, kind of looking at our two entrances, which I think is just, it's such a small detail that is really cool and it's just something really awesome. Them. Of course, we have tons of seating as well. Uh, when you come to, uh, especially an in interior when it's like warm outside, you want to take a quick break and enjoy the cool air. Uh, there is AC in here as well. Um, so we want to make sure that people can kind of enjoy and take a break. We did put this uh, little fence down as kind of like a barrier to, uh, to separate the two areas. Um, they do obviously, as you can see, walk through it, which is kind of maddening, but it is uh, something that we are working with. I uh, had a few recommendations kind of talking with uh, some of the other uh, Discord uh, viewers and uh, somebody mentioned, um, Clavy actually mentioned that I should do like a water feature. And I think that would be really cool and I think it's gonna be something I wanna focus on on one of my future builds. It's kind of incorporating this like really thin water feature into uh, one of our builds. Um, so hopefully that works out really well. If you have another recommendation for something you would have wanted to see here, uh, put it in the comments below because I think that's uh, really cool and, and you know, it just helps us all to improve. Of course, uh, another item from that same pack that I managed to uh, download, uh, help us stay in great shape. Do not feed the animals. I love uh, this document. And then, you know, I have a few of them kind of spurs around. We do not want our guests to throw any food in here uh, and feed the animals. So it's kind of like a little education uh, reminder. So I think it works out really well. And then I, of course, I love uh, what we've done in here. Uh, he's even going in to go check out the hard shelter, which is amazing. It's exactly what we wanted to see. Um, so very happy with how everything uh, turned out and I really like the uh, the windows like the the screens on the back uh, that we kind of made work you are gonna notice a change uh, and it was I put in our meerkats into the exhibit our meerkats could travel outside but our keepers could not so I had to uh, finagle something and this is what we've settled on uh, kind of making it work out I'm sure that you know if I spent a lot of time I could have made the video screen actually work and you know modify the the image to kind of fit the way I wanted it to uh, but uh, I spent a lot time on this build uh, a lot more time than I expected to so I, uh, I kind of went with this and really it, it's you know fits the theme in the idea that you're not gonna just let them go outside at any time of the night you know we're in a tempered environment so there's gonna be snow and they're not really rated for that type of weather so we need to make sure that they you know can stay inside when it's cold or uh, at night and things like that so this uh, kind of works out it's like a little shutter door you can lower it down uh, during inclement weather now, the other thing you can see here are these paw prints on these red circles. And then uh, having come through COVID, you know, I think we've all seen this before, which is like the two meter uh, social distancing um, features that we see on the floor all the time. And like when I worked in my retail job, uh, we had these all over the place. Uh, and it's kind of like, this is where you stand to kind of look into the exhibit. So you, you know that you're kind of two meters away from everybody. So kind of like a small little detail, but I love the way it works. And, you know, it of course encourages uh, more social distancing. Now, uh, another really cool feature is uh, become a zoo member today. Uh, this is something else I found on the Steam Workshop. And it's amazing all the stuff that people put together on the Steam Workshop. I don't think I would have ever been able to, to come up with something like this, uh, but it looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so very happy with this. And I think it fits with the theme of kind of creating this tight city zoo that's encouraging our uh, local uh, you know, guests to uh, become regular members. They can come back to the zoo 
uh, and you know gain free entry because they're paying their membership dues and stuff like that so really cool and of course like a little please ask staff for help sign so there's a few of these kind of uh, spraced around uh, letting them know that they can ask staff members for uh, assistance if they ever need it and then we also have our conservation board, which talks a lot more about conservation and how we can change, uh, make change within our daily lives to kind of help uh, conservation programs. I really like how this turned out and then having like the, the branches on the background to kind of add a little bit more uh, depth and shape to this. Uh, it looks really cool and it kind of turned out really well. Now, my favorite part is gonna be our backstage area. So we have this a private staff only sign so you know that you're not allowed back here. Our staff can go back here and then we kind of go through the doors and right off the bat, we have uh, some waste bins. Uh, so naturally we, we generate a lot of waste from our uh, goal to make sure that our, um, our animals are taken care of so they can kind of come out here, throw them out. We have like one recycling, one that's a refuse. Uh, so kind of a, a really cool small little detail. And then when we go through our main door here, there's quite a bit to go over. Of course, we have our safety equipment must be worn at all times. So when you come in here, you have to wear your safety equipment. We also have uh, like a breaker system for the entire building. So uh, we're on our own power system. And if you kind of look and you follow the line, it kind of leads to everything that we need to have power, which is a, a really cool small uh, little uh, feature. We have uh, a poster board which talks about a few things. We have management, health and safety in zoos, enclosure safety, and then actually keep it up with knowledge, skills and compliances, which is actually the European Professional Zookeeper Qualification Framework. Uh, so I thought some uh, really cool little details. And then we have a computer. Uh, it would make sense. We are a digital age, so a lot of our uh, stuff that we would need for the exhibit would be stored digitally. Um, so we have like a little computer that we can kind of work on. Now we have our, our shelter, which talked a little bit about this in the actual build. I won't go too, uh, too in depth, but we have our, uh, our little gate that can kind of separate it. So if we ever need to, uh, to separate our um, uh, exhibit, then you know, this is how we would do it kind of thing like that. So we can you know, have males on one side, females on the other side, or we can kind of bring them in and you know, make sure that we're able to test them. And we have these little doors on the sides that allows us to, uh, to open them up. Although this one uh, appears to be backwards, so that's uh, definitely on me. I'll need to uh, fix that. <laughs> uh, we have a little locker system so people can come in, they can leave their items in here when they're coming in. Uh, and I love the idea of having like these guided paths on the ground. So you kind of see everything has like where we need to go. We have like storage, we have uh, the yellow caution, like don't get too close because, you know, of course we want to stay a little far away from uh, cages and you don't want animals to kind of grab, uh, grab us and stuff like that. We have tons of deliveries place. So food items, uh, enrichment items, things like that would come here. Uh, we have our, um, you know, preparation area. So this is more for like just all the uh, the foliage and making sure that everything is kind of set up and we can kind of clean everything. We even have like a little miniature kitchen so that we can prepare uh, food. And then it's a little reduce your risk, wash your hands before and after touching the animals uh, or their environment, which is uh, something I thought was really cool and then a little fridge with a bunch of fruits that we can utilize and then danger wild animal and warning mind your head because it is a little short so we want people to make sure they can duck and then we have a switch for everything so the kind of the switch kind of operates a little door over here and you can kind of see like i mentioned uh the power cables kind of going over to everything else we have another switch over here that kind of activates the rest of the lights lots of lighting in here we need to make sure that it's taken care of but of course we have our skylights which just at letting in a lot of natural light as well we do have a second little storage area. So this is more for like long term storage. If we needed to store anything that, you know, may not have uh, need to have immediate access to, it kind of comes and hangs out in here, which uh, works out really well. And then as we uh, leave the exhibit, we're just going to kind of take a jog outside and uh, we'll come out. You'll start to see some uh, some new stuff uh, off in the distance, which is coming in a later episode. I've already started work on our next section because uh, I've uh, powered through this build and there is quite a bit for me to show you uh, that's coming. Now, uh, we have this nice big open area within our zoo. It's like a kind of like a plaza. I've added some benches right now, but that's kind of more just to, to fill up the space. I have a few ideas of things that I might want to see here, but I would love to get your feedback on what you guys would want to see kind of take in all of this open space. Maybe we have like a little fountain or a plaza. I don't know. So, you know, leave it in the comments below. Now, speaking of the comments as well, uh, let me know what you thought of this build or if there's anything you would change or any recommendations or feedback that you think that I need to hear. Uh, I love reading all of your comments uh, and I do appreciate all the feedback because that's how we improve. 
And of course, uh, you're gonna see a pinned comment for the Discord. If you're interested in joining the Discord and having more live conversations, you are always welcome to head on over there and uh, stop by. We're uh, always looking forward to chatting with new people. And we have tons of uh, little items that we have uh, ongoing that uh, allows us to interact and have fun together, uh, like our, uh, our community zoo, which I think was our last episode that we've uploaded. Uh, it was the first time we took a look at all the work in our community zoo. But that's it. This is where we're at. I think Cedarbrook Park Zoo is coming together. And again, you know, I just want to say uh, the level of detail and ability from our first build uh, with Ottawa Zoo Episode 1 all the way to Cedarbrook Park Zoo Episode 2, the Meerkat House, I think it goes to show there's a lot of work that's been accomplished. And it's not a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of work over a not a long period of time. So I think that just goes to show that the longer you play and the more you have fun and the more feedback you get and the tips and tricks that are shared, I think the better it becomes. And I'm really happy with what we've achieved. I'm also really happy to kind of show you guys uh, what's happening over there in the next episode. Uh, I'm really excited because uh, it kind of continues our idea of creating this truly realistic uh, entire zoo. And I think it's uh, we've built something that I'm really happy with. So I can't wait until everybody can see it. But that's it for now. Uh, as always, uh, thank you so much for watching and ciao for now, everybody.